Oh, Dave. Oh. Cracking up. Tell you what's up, Duncan's cracking up another beer. Oh, what? <laughs> the SB snatch. <laughs> what is up, people? It is Dave. It is Duncan back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. And for this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from Bay Area post metal doom gazers Mountaineer. The band's new album, Dawn and All That Follows, will be released on July 26th via Dunk Records in the EU and A Thousand Arms Music in the US. Via my records, you're welcome. <laughs> Not saying Duncan's biased about this one, but it's coming out in his records. Via record. me. <laughs> Big Dunk Records. Okay, so... Uh, formed in 2015 by guitarist Clayton Bartholomew and vocalist Miguel Meza in the San Francisco Bay Area, Mountaineer return with their fifth full-length album. During the pandemic, the band wrote and recorded their fourth album, Giving Up the Ghost, with Life Force Records once again handling the release. In 2022, Longtime drummer Patrick Spain amicably left the band and was replaced by Jordan Norton. Mountaineer then spent 18 months painstakingly writing and rehearsing the new material, which was to become the album Dawn and All That Follows. In early 2024, the band signed with Dunk Records, that's Dunk's label, and A Thousand Arms Music in the States. <laughs> um, guitarist Clayton Barth Bartholomew said uh, about the new record, I think. With Dawn and all that follows, we took our time and really focused on developing the songs. A lot of thought went into the composition and flow of the album. Attention to detail with the songwriting was more prevalent this time around. We wanted to write a collection of the best songs we could. As with all our previous albums we recorded at New Tone Studios with Ben Hirschfield producing, I think you can hear not only the evolution of the band in terms of songwriting over our five albums, but you can also hear Ben's growth as a producer, engineer and mixer. So, uh, Duncan, we've been <laughs> we've been on this trail for four years now. Um, since so albums, a fifth album for them, third album for us. Yes, we joined on Bloodletting. Bloodlet, boy, did we join on Bloodletting! Uh, <laughs> Favorite album of the year that year. It was 20, 2020. Yeah. Um, and then we did Giving Up the Ghost in twenty twenty two, which made both our top threes. So. Yep. Um, and then. They posted on Instagram last year to say. Did they though, Dave? Because you have yes. a you have like a I whole recollection <laughs> of a conversation that involved apparently publicly on some forum, maybe Duncan, YouTube. You I saying think. Mountaineers got an album coming out in twenty twenty four, and apparently <laughs> I, being a Mountaineer fan, didn't hear that. I think you were on the rap all that night, Duncan, <laughs> because I clearly remember saying. <laughs> Did I tell you I was on the rap doll as well? That's usually an indication I'm looking for something, Dave. And I'm also not wanting the shame. Uh, I went back and checked the Instagram post. It was Rambo that was on the background on the on the TV. I knew it was an 80s movie. I just can't remember which one it was. Um, uh, yeah, and then obviously we uh, we reacted to um, their first single, Cradle Song, which is the opening track. And then I was like, um, that, we, that, we are so close to this album being released, there's absolutely no way, wink, that we'll <laughs> ever get an advanced copy of this album, wink, <laughs> to review before its release date. Oh, wink. <laughs> and here we are, Dave, local <laughs> home that took Dave 24 hours <laughs> to materialise a copy of this album. That's how much clout this guy has. So how much for hip I have, Duncan, that's right. <laughs> so much clout he has, and apparently they're on my record label, and I wasn't aware I was releasing anything. So. Um, what nonsense. A lot of shenanigans here. Yeah, I mean, I think it was an understatement to say we were quite excited after listening to that, that first uh, Dude, single. I can't stress enough how there are certain bands that hit you at certain times, and yep. the kind of transform the way you appreciate and almost chart mm. like the next level of your your musical listening we've spoken about before like bands that hit you at a certain point and you're like that right this is what I love now mm. yeah and from now like, I, I, there's there's a, almost a, a weird genesis that moves out of all these other bands that you will inherently start linking back to your love of that without mm. this I couldn't appreciate this this yeah. this this and this but you also hear all the influences underneath 
which like are predisposed to you loving that. Oh, mm. they sound like oh, all the stuff that I love. Mountaineer are that band for me. They're a hugely important band in not only the life cycle of what we're doing here, Metal Epidemic, but I honestly think above maybe any band we've ever discussed, ever, are the most underrated, criminally underknown band on the planet right now. Yeah. And that the two albums they've released that we've heard, notwithstanding the stuff that came out before, I think are like like modern day classics mm. that this band should be fucking huge. <laughs> yep. And here we are um, on this new album, which um, Dave was expecting. I would not have known about this had it not been for Instagram. <laughs> yeah. sent a new record label. I was like, oh, they might have a new album coming. And Dave's like, yeah, they were recording it last year. <laughs> um, so I do. I, I, th- I feel we spend a huge, like a, a disproportionate amount of time talking about Mountaineer. But we are only overcompensating because no one else is talking about Mountaineer. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, um, so coming off of that track, coming off of Cradle Song, the first single, opening and song as well, yeah. Opening opening track of the album, yeah. Um, did the rest of the album live up to your expectations? So Mountaineer are charting a five out of five, and uh. Five out of five. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what do we sc- we score things at a five? We do. I don't want to like preempt and set, set off an explosion. <laughs> I just get a five, right? Like they are like, yeah, this is better. And like this is the thing that confuse. Like there is no. This to me is the best thing they've done. I'm just putting that out okay. at, at the front right now. Um, because I think this is their most unified sound on an album, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. Um, and that, like on the previous, like on Bloodletting when we were introduced to them, I felt like there was a there was still a huge amount of that kind of doomy sludge in there. Still a mm. bit of the gruff, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's here, but it's different. Yeah. But it was it was really in there. And then when we made, went to Giving Up the Ghost, which was a considerably shorter album, it was like mm. twenty minutes shorter than the previous album. We spoke about how there seemed to be an emphasis much more on the the kind of the, the the kind of gazy sort of sound that was going through there, but also a kind of grungy element, which yeah. neither one of us were expecting. Both of us fucking loved. Mm. Um, so this to me was always going to be a hugely important release because what version of Mountaineer were we going to get on the next release? Was mm. this going to be a case of? well, we didn't go as heavy on the previous album, so we're going to compensate for that. Or, yeah. actually, we like this lighter tone that we're now doing with these grungier elements, so we're going to lean more into that. And actually, Dawn and All That Falls is neither. Um, it, it encapsul- and that's not to say that it, they've lost any of those elements. I think, if anything, what they've done is focused, sharpened, honed, and um, almost reinvented those elements for the band's sound. Mm-hmm. This is an incredibly focused album. <laughs> a focused album which oxymoronically sits beside like a propensity to just wander. Mm. This album loves a like, loves a wee wander. Come with us while we go for a wee wander. Um and I love that about it. It is in no hurry at all. In fact, I think it's almost universally across its entire runtime at the same BPM. It doesn't really stray far from but no. by God, is it fucking majestic? Um, so, couple of things, and then we'll talk about the tracks and just fucking get my dick wet. Um, <laughs> like the the big thing here is vocally, this is their strongest album. Vocally, they've never had a problem. <laughs> like, no. like, no. like vocally, Mountaineer is already like at the top. It's not mm. at the top of the mountain. If there had been a mountaineer climbing to, they'd been at the top of that mountain, Dave. Yeah. Uh, turns out that mountain was one peak. And there was another peak <laughs> higher up, and then they climbed that. Um, this is the most confident, most assured, most captivating vocal performance the band have ever drawn in, and this is across the board. <laughs> Not only are the the lead melodies just enthralling. The vocal harmonies are 
it's like feathered in the spine. It's just <laughs> fucking incredible. And it's all over the album. Just mm. everywhere. You're just getting hit with the most lush vocal line you've ever heard that soars and swoons and weaves. And, oh, it's... I can't even do justice to how fucking great that aspect is. Mm. They've also che- they've, they've switched up the aggressive vocal tone. I kind of fucking love it. Um, and the earlier stuff, it was much more gruff. Mm. On this one, it has much more a kind of... It's a more mature, shoutier version mm-hmm. of the vocal. Still heavily melodic, but with a, like, with a, a more shouty, edgier tone behind it, where in the past, it leaned more into that kind of sludgy, gruff vocal. Mm-hmm. We've kind of lost that a little bit. And I'll be mm-hmm. honest, I don't miss it here. It actually would have worked against what you have on this album. So that adjustment works perfect. So, like, just like totally in with that the next big thing that really stands out to me is the confidence in the songwriting Mountaineer were a band that would hit you with something long form and then maybe compensate with something shorter to follow up almost as if they were like we understand that that was 8 minutes right (laughs) we understand that you're probably listening to this in your car or you're doing it well like short track cleans things out here's another 7 minute song you don't really get that here. Everything is longer form. There are a couple of shorter tracks, but when I say shorter tracks, it's about the five minute mark. And things run, but they also don't take the piss. They don't like rip this to like nine, 10, 12 minute tracks. Yep. Mm. It's all comfortably around the six minute to eight minute range for the majority of the songs here, give or take ones that are a little bit shorter. Um, and I think that's the perfect song line for them as well. It allows them to expose great intros. Um, Cradle Song being the opening track really sets the tone for this, but that is pretty much picked up on every single song here as an intro where you're like, <sighs> like you just like instantly exhale and you're just in the zone. Yeah. They'll have your verse chorus sections that are standard. The interludes here are just, it's like kaleidoscopes of just like joy and light and beauty and wonder. And it's like, it's like that scene in um, the original um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory where Gene Wilder takes you through the tunnels. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> like, and everything's going fuck it. It's like that, but unless all the creepy stuff was happening <laughs> and more happy things were happening. <laughs> So I would yeah. imagine what a remake of that movie is like now where we're not trying to terrify kids. Mm. Um, it's just like, it is so vivid and vibrant and full of colour and wonder. Um, so you get those always in the interludes and then the closing sections are always huge. Mm. Like it's like, you think you hit a crescendo and the album has another crescendo in it. Once, yeah. If we're talking about peaks and then another peak, that's what this... The album is constantly climbing for a band called Mountaineer. The <laughs> name is so fucking apt, it's incredible. And it continues all the way... Just when you think you found the highest point of this album, mm. the next song delivers the next highest point. And I don't know how they do it. Like, mm. it's an album full of highlights, and the highlights aren't moments on tracks. They are tracks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, you just kind of find yourself just going... This is my new favourite. No, this is my new favourite. This whole thing is my favourite bit. <laughs> um, I think the production, I think, shows that they, but they, like, the producer they've been working with for a while, never lose this guy. Mm. He's practically in your band. He's like, yeah. he manages to... Every album sounds more accomplished. Yep. Mm-hmm. Show me another producer that works with a band long form where things fundamentally get tighter and bigger I I can't think of any it's usually the other way producers are usually it's it's like if Ross Robinson recorded with Corn tomorrow Mm. people would be like that it needs to sound like the debut Um, it wouldn't be it needs to sound like the sim now I just like he just keeps bringing the best out of them yeah and the band keep pushing themselves and he is acclimated to follow what the band is doing um, as opposed to trying to curtail from what I hear anyway their sims um, I can't highlight a highlight on this otherwise this video will be twice the length of the album <laughs> um, I will say this uh, Prism is 
maybe one of my favourite tracks I've heard this year. Um, and it's the vo- the vocal levels I was talking about before, where he sticks in a range, and then he hits that higher range, and every time he hits that, I just honestly marry me. Um, <laughs> right, it's so, like it is that it's on that level where I feel my I'm not an emotional person when I listen to music. Mm. I get goosebumps, but I'm not. I'm, I, I don't get invested that way. But I felt myself welling up a little bit listening to it. Is is mm. it's so beautiful a track. Um, I think their lead track, Dawn and All That Follows, which is the longest track on here, is a perfect example of why Mountaineer can just really do anything that they want. Yeah. Um, and you get this, like, tracks like um, You Will Always Be One of Us or Dark Passenger show the heavier elements of the band, but I'm actually quite glad that they don't lean too much into that beyond mm. here. Like, Dark Passenger has those shoutier moments I'm talking about where it's... His voice is almost... It's almost breaking, but there's a vulnerability of it that I really fucking love. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Parallels is a beautiful closer on the album as well. I, but I like picking my favourite song on this would be like asking me to pick which one of my two kids is my favourite. Mm. Either answer is going to get me in its shit. You know what <laughs> I mean? So um, I will hand this off to you because I know you will have equally as many accolades to throw on this. I will reiterate my point before. I think that Mountaineer are not only one of the most important bands on the planet right now, but they're one of the most criminal underlisting bands and appreciated bands. Yep. Um, in my lifetime, if I have to fucking sell a kidney, I will see this band live. <laughs> but, um, I, like... They make it sound different. The the way I felt about this at the end, and this is a crass comparison, but I, I feel like it, it weirdly is apt in some respects, and hopefully you'll get it. Um, I was always a, and I still am to this day, a huge Taproot fan, right? Mm. And I remember when Taproot's debut gift came out, and then their second album, Promise, Promise. Um. Can't remember. Um, was Blue, Blue Sky Research was, was Blue that Sky after? Research was the third album, right? All ah, right. So it was the album that had Poem on it, right? Right. So their second album came out and I was like, this is really fucking cool. And then Blue Sky Research came out and I heard that and I was like, this band is fucking just like different. Like it's different, huge, amazing, massive, like and like everything should be thrown at this band now because they've transcended any any label you could put on them. This 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 album right now sounds like it's its own thing that people will now look back to mm. as like an offshoot for and it did. I could chart bands back to that. Dawn and all that follows to me is the Blue Sky research of the back catalogue of Mountaineer where I hear this band like forming a sound which feels more focused, more mature, huge. Mm-hmm. And to me, is the, I think, is the tipping off point for the band. I, I cannot imagine that we'll be sitting here a year from now going, why have people not heard them? I, I, I genuinely think this is the one that's going to get the buzz in. It is a, an immaculate... It's a perfect... Ta- this is, like... If, if perfect is a word that we use to define albums or describe albums. This is... Like, that word no better suits any album than this. Yeah. It's a perfect album. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I was drained this week, by the way. Like, we've had a couple of, like, big old emotional clangers this week. Albums. I've been, st- like... I've sweat about half a stone off my, my, my weight and just been sat like close to tears, most of it. Um, you're a big fan, Dave. You like occasionally, you bought an expensive pair of headphones to listen to Bloodlet, and that's how serious you were about this and, band. And then I bought um, it on vinyl, Duncan. <laughs> even picked up on vinyl just to make sure. Did you listen to it with the headphones you bought for your... No, I've got better speakers for... Uh, oh, for I... I, I <laughs> I bought an entire sound system. I spent 500 quid on speakers, Duncan. (laughs) I'm not using headphones. Uh... One day. Um, (laughs) Yeah, like, I've said this sentence already. I got to the end of this and I was, like, pretty much in heaven. I Mm. can't imagine that you weren't. So, I feel like, this is the point where you just back up everything I say, add the additional sprinkling of compliments on stuff Mm. that I may have missed. Uh, but ultimately, yeah. I think the listeners know where this is going. I don't like this, to be honest. You're uh, a lion <laughs> for trolling the um, dungeon, ladies and gents. <laughs> Big David the Troll. Create, yeah, 
Cradle song, opening track, we did the reaction. It felt like a statement. It felt like they were putting their best foot forward. Like, yes. exactly like they did on Bloodletting um, uh, with uh, Book of the Blood. It was a track that was equally as crushing as it was uplifting. <laughs> the one that Dave bought headphones for. Yeah, when I heard that, <laughs> like, I was like, oh We're not God. listening to another track here <laughs> until I get better fucking headphones. Exactly. Um, Cradle song is maybe not quite heavy, quite quite as heavy vocally as Blood of the Book, mm. um, but man, it still has the weight and the heft and the guitars and like all great mountaineer songs, it comes with a melody that will leave your jaw on the floor. Um, when we did our reaction video to Cradle Song, um, I was singing Are You Sleeping or Are You Awake for days afterwards. Like it was stuck in my head. It's such, it's such an effortless line, but it just sticks with you. Yeah. And after that opener, I was like, how, how did they, how did they take that? Like, how did they top that? Like. They are currently standing on top of the mountain, but can this opening track be exceeded? Turns out, Duncan, <laughs> it absolutely can. Did you have to wait long for that answer, Dave? No, I did not. No, there you um, go. <laughs> and I'm all honesty here, Duncan. Although this is an album of brand new material from Mountaineer, hmm. I felt like I was listening to a Greatest Hits album. Like they'd cherry picked the best of the best mm. for this release every song on this album is as good if not better than the opening track there is not a single track on this album that drops in quality or feels like the band are phoning it in it is just perfectly constructed and every track feels like its own little interconnected part of the story on Dawn and all that follows all different and incredible on their own but together on one album is an experience i i felt like every time a new song reached its peak i had a new favorite and on each track they kept doing something that was more impressive than what they'd done before weirdly when we reacted to cradle song i hadn't seen the artwork for the album yet um <laughs> i never even discussed the artwork <laughs> when i saw the artwork <laughs> It's like, it all yes. kind of made sense. I was like, <laughs> holy shit. Right. <laughs> and I think firstly it stood out because it's different in terms of the design compared to what we've had previously mm. from Mountaineer. Um, the colours of Bloodletting and Giving Up the Ghost totally made sense for the material and the titles of those yeah. releases. But I think this was the first time that the artwork kind of mirrored how it feels to listen to a Mountaineer album. Yeah. Um, that kind of like gravitational pull and and like being suspended in the air almost kind of weightless i felt all of that when i was listening to this album because mountaineer do this style so well they do immersive like no other band like yeah it's a, I like you're right it's experienced music like yeah like you like the, this is uh you don't dip in and out of a song here you know what i mean you don't no. i'm just gonna listen to try no. live today you no, can't you, you can't do that no no i I think, like Bloodletting was is my favorite was my favorite Mountaineer album, and I think they have surpassed what was my favorite Mountaineer album in Bloodletting. This is just phenomenal. Like this album is incredible for me. Not only did these tracks flow like incredibly well into one another, um, but the the compositionally they are they are perfect. There's not a verse or chorus here that feels flawed in length mm -hmm. that the pacing of how they build a track up is just perfect i think nearly nearly every track opens with some sort of like clean or like soft guitar passage that that develops uh, throughout the track before it finally hits you with that you know wall of guitars and that kind of moment and th there's three guitarists in this band let's not forget that <laughs> so like when it hits you like it, it hits you with an absolute force um and then they continue to build upon that kind of the back and forth, the, the ebb and flow between distorted guitars and that ethereal melody, adding in more layers of texture and lead work to give you these moments that just feel like breathtaking. And it just happens constantly throughout this album. Um, as I mentioned, each track takes a slightly different approach 
um, when it comes to kind of tone, you know, some feel a bit kind of more, a bit lighter, a bit more uplifting. Uh, then there's others that get a bit darker in chord choice and, and vocal delivery. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the, the title track was a great example of kind of both of those worlds coming together with the introduction be fa- being fairly slow burn, nice and airy. And then, you know, it's got kind of very subtle picked chords, but then the middle of the track gets really dark, uh, really heavy, leaning into and leaning more into that kind of post metal side. Um, and the vocals become more aggressive, more like kind of screamed than, than sung. Um, it's the longest track on the album at over like seven and a half minutes, but I felt like they always justify the length, you know, mm-hmm. by by taking you through this just sun- stunning kind of odyssey of serene beauty and an overwhelming kind of heaviness. Um, and like heaviness is something that's still on this album. Um, if you're speaking of heavy, talk about Dark Passenger. What a track, like... Mm one of those tracks that doesn't really hold back um it's fairly heavy the whole way through for me there was a heavy alice in chains type feel coming through <laughs> yeah. on this track it's still quite sludgy and it has that kind of post metal weight to it but there's definitely a bit of the grunge kind of flowing through this one um even in the vocals as well which um which is where i want to touch next because the the kind of evolution of Miguel as a vocalist um, is very clear on this album. His his melody and, and phrasing is always great. Like the past two albums, he's been fantastic. But I think it gets slightly more refined on each release. Um, and for me, I think this is his best performance yet. Um, his melodies are so on point here. Uh, the range, like you mentioned, that he hits on Prism is just incredible. Like... <laughs> Unbelie- and talk about hooks I think lyrically mm-hmm. this is fantastic he, he, he he's clever though he never overcooks it lyrically he keeps it fairly neat he never gets overly wordy or tries to fit too much in but I think that helps make these hooks land even stronger um, he's conscious he's, of his syllables yeah you for sure mean, very it's very a, conscious of them yeah his, his choice of, of melody and, and phrasing is just kind of flawless on this album every track had a moment where i just stopped and you know stopped completely what i was doing and just was like fuck that's outstanding um i, I thought prism and um you will always be one of us were the two tracks that really kind of stood out uh, vocally for me uh, the melodies on prism and range on prism was was awesome but uh, lyrically, I found uh, "You Will Always Be One of Us." I thought it was really profound. I really, I, I read through the lyric sheet as I was listening to the album, and I thought that was stunning choice of, of lyrics on that one. Um, as always, the, the albums always end on a high note, um, mm-hmm. and this one does again with parallels, which kind of has it all. Really, it's a kind of weighty post metal riff, massive chorus. Uh, you've got uplifting lead work in there. Um, they, I love that they kind of brought in a little bit of synth at the end of that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, give it a little bit of a thicker backdrop. It also kind of tied in some of the themes and the artwork as well. And then closing just with the acoustic guitar on its own, it just felt like the kind of perfect way to, to close out the album. Um, Production-wise, it's it's kind of ridiculous how good this is, to be honest. Um, and I say it on every album, but this this sounds just it sounds colossal like the same producer as we mentioned uh, ben hirschfield you can it's, it's cool because you can hear the the tissue and the connection between the previous albums that he's worked on they all sound incredible but there's also little nuances between them that are different um this one for me felt slightly kind of brighter in places um mm-hmm. i felt like the guitars had a bit more bit more vibrancy to them uh drums were the same that there's a little bit more kind of snap and the the snare on this one that slightly more kind of punchy the drums on this one um, it's not drastically different um it's still very organic and in keeping with what they've released before so it's still very like sounds very much like a mountaineer record but you can hear the the little tweaks and improvements that he's made um as a producer um on every album it just gets better and better um yeah the, the album's <laughs> The albums that are currently in my end of year list just got steamrolled by Mountaineer, um, and this this could well be a repeat of twenty twenty. To be honest, um, <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> oh, uh, Pete, behind the curtain, we're currently formulating our mid year lists. Yeah, and both of us couldn't be happier that this is a July release. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it takes the pressure off a little bit. Um, <laughs> Because our list would be fucked. 
yeah. Um, yeah, it would. yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm going to ask the question, final thing, as we always do, um, what would you score Mountaineer? You've kind of already said that at the start of the if review. There was but... a, if there was a level above what we score the best albums we listen to, I would yeah. give it that. There isn't. Um, so, knowing that the streak is alive, this is their third consecutive yeah. five star review from this guy I, yeah um it's a five from me as well like I, I have no complaints about this um whatsoever i do think it is the best thing they've released so far yeah um i don't think we've ever had a band knock out three five star reviews I, like ever. name like name any band like and without going like i mean um <laughs> i wouldn't even like score a five though <laughs> Name one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, but you know what? In summation to it, though, are they are they the most exciting band? Yes. Ever without knowing, like, they're, I don't think they're ever gonna. They're, you're never gonna get a jazz section in anything they do. You know what I mean? Yeah. You kind of know what you're gonna get from Mountaineer, but they somehow manage to take what you know you're gonna get and make it sound bigger, huger, better. Yeah. Like every album, every yeah. fucking album. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 like, I fully expect me to be sitting here two years, three years from now, going that fourth consecutive fifth. Mm. Like, I, like, I, I don't think this band have a bad album in them at yeah. all. And considering this is a band with a brand new drummer as well, like, and... <laughs> okay, we'll just throw that in. Personnel changes yeah. as well, and it, you couldn't tell. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, you could tell it's a different drummer, but there's no kind of change in the, the kind of tightness of the band. They so, still sound as cohesive as, as ever. Um, so it's kind of mind blowing that they've they've changed a, a kind of intricate part of the band and it still sounds this good. Um, ridiculous, really. Um, I need to see this band live. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of at the point of begging you now to get to the UK. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. We I'm might hoping. have to do a GoFundMe to get <laughs> fucking the Bay Area. <laughs> Kickstarter, let's do it. Um, I'm hoping maybe now they've got a US label and a, a European label. Hopefully yeah. between the two of them, we can maybe get something over I think here. those labels need to double their efforts so to get this band out. Yeah. We, and and for, if the band are checking this out, we legitimately mention you to almost every single band we interview, every single producer that we talk to. Or literally anyone that asks us, as reviewers, what do we recommend? Regardless of genre, like Mountaineer is pretty much at the is the first thing that comes out of both of our mouths. Yeah. Um, yeah. If if the if the world was just, you'd be fucking huge. <laughs> um, Dawn and all that follows out on July twenty sixth um, on a thousand hours music and Dunk Records. Um, please check out the links below. Have a listen to the band. I'll put the pre order in put in a, a single and stuff you can check out have a listen this this does not disappoint in the slightest um this is your new favorite band so please check this out um that is the review thank you for checking out much appreciated we'll be back with another review very soon but until then take care speak to you soon bye everyone Ooh, I-